Howdy, y'all. My name's the infamous Orion, and I stand for integrity. So when I say I stand for integrity, I mean I'm just going to stand here for a little bit, and then you can decide if it's integrity or not. I, I'm Chiral. I'm I'm also a schmo. Is anything changing yet? No. How about now? N no. Then what's the fucking point of just standing here and doing nothing? We should probably talk about stuff then. Maybe <laughs> No, we don't talk about issues. We just say we're doing stuff about them. <laughs> yeah. How's that for topical so, comedy? So We took a week off, and it was a week. Wasn't it? It's like always, it, it, the it weeks was. we take off, shit happens. Yep. It's inevitable. We should just never do another show, and then all political problems will be solved forever. I knew Jesus. this w podcast would bring the world peace. <laughs> Exactly. So mission accomplished. What the fuck happened, Kyrol? Tell me more while I just stand here okay. and do nothing. So Canada had a large protest in I want to say Ottawa, Ontario, broadly, regarding their vaccine and masking mandates. Particularly the vaccine mandates, but it was a pretty broad situation, and these people were protesting by driving large trucks, particularly semis, and basically just parking them in the streets so that people couldn't use the roads. Uh, and in particular there, they were doing it at the international border crossings between Detroit, Michigan, and Windsor, Ontario on the Ambassador Bridge. So, so, yeah, they Good. closed the border in effect, and it took them more than a week to do something about this. Yeah, even though it was something like three hundred million dollars in commerce that was being stopped. Is this the Seuss Canal of 2022? Yeah, it's exceptionally dumb. Um, a lot of people have been making contrasts to it to a completely nonviolent protest that occurred in Canada over an oil pipeline that was being planned to, well, not planned, it did run through um, First Nations individuals in Canada. And they were trying to stop this pipeline from being built on their land. Understandable. Well, that was apparently not agreeable to uh, the government of Canada and their police or the oil companies that were, I'm sure, involved with it because the police came in almost immediately and basically arrested all of them. Remember, late like kids. Just people. No, no weapons. No disrupting international trade. Just people. All of them got arrested very swiftly. Now we have a bunch of white guys in their big trucks, and well, you can't possibly do anything about that. How much oil did they hold back? Uh, literally none, because the pipeline hadn't been built yet. That's it, motherfucker. No, I'm talking about the truckers right now. Oh, probably. I, uh, so, in total commerce, it was about three hundred million. Was the number I heard thrown around? Damn. I mean, I, I'm just making yeah. a joke that they yeah. didn't piss off the right people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, couple of notable things that came out of this. First is that this was an incredibly poorly organized thing because their tactic here is to disrupt day-to-day -day lives of people in commerce for an extended period of time to try and change the current laws that were written. Yeah? Yeah. Except within 24 hours, they had food problems because they didn't bring enough food or any in some cases. Were they they like, were they treating it like a tailgate almost? And that's why they went through their food so much? No, no, no. Like they didn't bring anything at all. What the f Okay. Go on, so, dudes. <laughs> what these these idiots decided to do was to then go and harass a soup kitchen. No. Including assaulting some of the people who were legitimately there. They harassed a soup kitchen to try and get food because they were hungry and they didn't have any food or money for themselves. So they went to a soup kitchen, a place for hungry people who have no wealth in this world, and tried occupying that. 
That's right. And worse than that, they assaulted some of the people who were like homeless and legitimately there just trying to get a meal. Well, it's not like they can afford to sue. Yeah. Well, Silver Lining, this, of course, went pretty viral on social media. Um, and the soup kitchen afterwards has received a ton of support from people who are just like, well, yeah, that's bullshit. So thankfully for them, it's worked out well enough in the end. But the circumstances that caused it in the first place should not have happened. Like, I'm all for peaceful <clears throat> protest, like mm -hmm. an effective peaceful protest, mind you. But yep. I want to know what their fucking end game was besides, you know, reversing we'll, we'll a mandate. Yeah, because we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. They have a very specific, very white end game and we'll get there. Chiral, you're making um, me feel very insecure with being a whole ring cracker over here, good sir. So, second big thing that happened is once these, uh, I don't even call them hardships, um, gross oversights and planning started to be realized, multiple people started to put up, like, GoFundMe type things, campaigns. Mm -hmm. One of which, because there's so many people here, and so many people who are supporting them for some fucking reason, uh, quickly earned money up to the tune of about $7 million dollars. Except the person who organized it took the first million dollar payout and then disappeared. That is not a scam, ladies and gentlemen. That's legit. Not at all. Uh, after that, GoFundMe caught on to it. It was pretty clearly in violation of like their terms and services of stuff for what it was being used for. Um, and has been subsequently shutting down every other one that's popped up since. Wow. So what is their end goal? Um, turns out, unsurprisingly, when you really start to look at it, that like all of these kinds of things that we've been having that are related to anti-vaccine and anti-mandate, they tend to tie back to a pretty specific group of people, Nazis. Sig Heil? One of, one of the uh, half dozen or so founding coordinators of this group of people is an out and out white supremacist neo-Nazi. In um, Canada. In Canada, yes. That's a rare kind of Nazi. Canadian Nazis, I have never heard of before. But go on, tell me more about this unicorn. And while they were by no means the majority of the people there, there was a not insignificant number of people who were openly flying Nazi flags and being Nazis at this protest, and they weren't being kicked out or removed from the protest in any way. So when you're at a protest and you see Nazis, and you have the choices of kick the Nazis out, leave yourself, or stay and continue to protest alongside the Nazis, it starts to blur the lines of who is actually a Nazi, or at least a Nazi sympathizer. I mean, you could say they did not see it coming. Yeah. That's my favorite awful joke. Absolutely. Very unfortunately for the uh, Magic the Gathering community side of this, one of the community's formerly beloved artists, uh, Seb McKinnon, was very openly at this, and it's not gone well for him on the social media side. Ouch. Put it that way. Bit of backlash. Um, not any official statements from Wizards of the Coast regarding it, but uh, they've tended to have a pretty short tolerance for intolerance when it comes to who they work with so even if they don't continue like make a public statement um there's been a number of people that they've just kind of stopped working with in the past over similar things it's all fun and games until someone that does something you like shows up at a very questionable protest yeah so and it was especially frustrating because it's someone that a lot of people like and respect and then you have to see him talk about how Oh, you know, the, 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 we we didn't see any Nazis. And it's like, dude, that's not even close to the point. It's it was he he went out and said, if I saw Nazis, I would have kicked them out. And it's like, great, look at social media; they were there. You know, I'm just going to steer clear of those uh, Nazis over there. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that, that's ultimately, like, the end goal that they had. They even, I, I don't know the details of it, so I'm not going to go into detail, but there was something along the lines of people trying to instill some sort of an interim replacement government for Trudeau, which was just, like, clearly bullshit and dumb and would never work. So, they talked about it for sure. 
what I love about a lot of these protests is that like majority of the time, you know, I can sympathize with people not being content and they want to protest. Oh, yeah. Excellent move, my dude. I, you know, I would probably yep. be in the same shoes. I can relate to that. Yep. Like, yeah, protest all you want. As soon as you start blocking emergency vehicles, you're out of line. Yeah. The moment like the end of it. you step past a certain point, like, yep. your, your protest better be effective for once or else you're just wasting your time. Because, like, honestly, if you're just blocking the road, what is that even doing? You're just inconveniencing everybody that's not part of the government. And you're, you know, pulling another country into it when you're blocking up the borders. So it's like, what do? What What's your plan, my dudes? You know, like, this is not at all bringing your message to Trudeau that much. You know what Trudeau is probably doing? He's probably still wiping pa- uh, pictures of his face with blackface from Halloween all those years ago off the internet because he's probably still concerned about that. Trudeau actually just kind of left the city and went into like protective with their equivalent of the Secret Service because like yeah of course the Mounties. No, it was some some other like special protection group. I know, but I, I mean, want to imagine Mounties. Do, right, like you have a bunch of angry white guys with an agenda. Like yeah, you're not gonna just stick around and wait and see what happens if you're the prime minister. Just a little south of the border, we had an issue like that with um, good old Whitmer. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I I wouldn't be surprised if Trudeau knew about that or not. Oh, absolutely. Considering sure. geographically, we are very close to these mm-hmm. people. Well, and there's a lot of trade that happens between Michigan and Canada, of course, just because of the border that's there. Yeah. And the fact that you have to cross the water, so there's a lot of shared bridges that have shared, um, like, upkeep and payments that go towards their maintenance. So there's already a pretty clear line of communication there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he was very aware of it. I wouldn't be surprised if we're uh, Canada's favorite state. We got to be. I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. Can't be New York. No. Fuck New York. So going on from this, uh, there's been a number of copycat protests that have sprung up afterwards to, uh, let's say, mixed results. Let's see if I can find this one. A social, or a, a news article that I took a screen snip of and sent. Let's see it though. Particularly, the two places that I've heard talked about are uh, France and New Zealand. Those are two very different places. Go on. So the New Zealand one I think is particularly funny because they've, of course, had a very strict response to COVID and they've had basically no mass outbreak of it because they've had such a strict, quick response. Yeah. Which I'm really curious how they're going to do when they reopen up. Yeah. I mean, they'll be fine. You know, they're, they're probably just going to keep the measures they have because, like, internally – they're fine at this point. It's just international travel that has limits on it. And if you're internationally traveling into the country from somewhere, you got to quarantine pretty much. Yeah. So the other one in uh, France is equally funny because it's been like this big thing on social media of like oh like coordinating and getting these people together and we're gonna go to the i guess be paris or whatever and we're gonna protest and we're gonna do the same thing that they're doing in canada i wish i could find it but there was a news article talking about it with some reporters that went to one of the locations that they were saying they were gonna start to assemble at to start the travel into the capital Mm -hmm. and literally no one showed up rough yeah, it's like pony levels of slacktivism. Well, okay, that's a great word, by the way, because that's how I would describe a lot of these protests. Because mm-hmm. oh, yeah. a lot of them end up that way. You want some advice, everybody, on what would make an effective protest? You know what was a great protest? Anyone mm-hmm. that had MLK at it, because you had a great mm-hmm. central figure, you had a great distinct message, you were turning people yeah. over to the other side. And you knew it was effective because the police came to bark at your ass. Yeah. I mean, 
that does tend to be the problem with a lot of these is that i don't know i i would hesitate to call this ineffective because they certainly were annoying for a couple of days you know but they didn't get what they wanted that's honestly what i consider a effective one didn't either yo you're right yo you know what history foresight all that shit out the window i'll give you that point correct yep one of the better insights that I've seen on the response to Martin Luther King is that uh, the mass efforts against him didn't really start to take off until he started to talk about um, reparations. Mm. That's pretty telling. Yeah. Dude, it's so weird how the civil rights movement is like such a weird, like, blank spot in u.s history where they just kind of keep it to like some of the bare minimum facts but don't get into much with the details oh yeah for sure it's almost like I there's design. a reason for that yeah <laughs> so in other other big news this is the other big article of the last week um tensions are continuing to rise in the ukraine with regard to russia's presence at it Oh, Vladimir, what are you doing now, you crazy kid? This is something you could probably go on for like an hour with, but I don't want to because I'm hoping it turns out to be just kind of a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> um, but I've seen some pretty brain dead takes on Twitter about this going in both directions. Go on. There like... seems to be a lot of people that are just really ignorant to what is happening like the idea that i've seen is that russia is not at fault here it's the u.s's fault because the u.s wants a war which is like what mm, like you might not be it might be true that the u.s does want some sort of military action to prop up their military industrial complex but the idea that russia is without any blame in this is really weird oh yeah no i mean like it, the narrative here is pretty cut and dry in terms of, yeah. like, who is doing what. Like, I'm sorry, how how long ago was the stuff with Crimea? I don't think it was that long ago. Yeah, exactly. Wasn't, like, most of it... Okay, wasn't, like, some of the f- footwork for this, like, laid out back when Putin held the 20, uh, 2012 Winter Games there? Something like that? I actually don't know. I just remember... Probably. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, because, like, after, like, everybody left the russia for the olympics um he started like picking at uh ukraine like almost immediately just to kind of secret that russia's wanted access to a warm water port for a really long time to bolster their their military yep um yeah they annexed it in 2014 which is eight eight years ago which is longer than i thought but it legitimately feels like people have forgotten what it is like russia only has 160,000 troops on the ukrainian border and literally took a peninsula away from ukraine by military force but russia's not an antagonist at all dude that was like two presidents ago and we still like forget all the shit that happened when trump was in office yeah it's been wild um but the other part of it is that people are just like hey u.s maybe like I, i that's the part that i don't get people asking the u.s to not do something like the u.s or nato is somehow at fault for russia trying to pressure their borders with their neighbors it's like "Uh, we're the world police don't don't you know that's how that works you know if you don't want if you don't want war in europe maybe tell russia to fuck off just a thought (laughs) No, it's really. The the part that I think is really interesting about it is that Russia's economy right now is not in a good spot, and it feels to me at least like part of this is coming out as an act of desperation to try and do anything that they can to push the economy into a healthier spot. I can see it. Yeah, I totally can. It would it would not it would not be something that doesn't make sense. Do you hear those right. drums, Chiral? Hear the oh, drums yeah. in the background? Mm-hmm. That's Putin drumming up business. Mm-hmm. Yep. Wars are good for military-based economies. Yeah. And also, I mean, that was like part of the thing with the USSR is it was able to prop itself up off of 
uh, you know, you can just ignore the part where you're in massive amounts of debt because, you know, you gotta, gotta keep fighting. The horrors of capitalism, my friend, know no end, and we are not free men until the world is free. Keep fighting, brother. I gotta see if I can find this, because this was like, <laughs> what? Uh, this is a quick aside. Magic had a new set release. Okay. Um, set on the planet of Kamigawa, which is pretty tightly inspired by traditional Japanese folklore and art. Let me see if I can find this. And I found what is probably the most brain dead take. What? Because yes, the plane is set up in a way that has um, an emperor, you know, so it's a very concentrated amount of power, like a shogun. And yeah, uh, more more like because well, Japan had an emperor for a very long time, um, a a royal family, and it wasn't until um, the military based shoguns came in and basically did a coup, and it kind of went back and forth for a while in the you know, about a thousand-ish, maybe more than that years ago in Japan. I'm a bit rusty on my Japanese history. I need to watch that uh, video again on YouTube. Bill Wirtz. History of Japan, yes. Yeah. But that's why I went to actually, Shogun immediately, because... Right. Yeah. Somebody actually put on Twitter, on what looked to be their main account, oddly, I'm more worried about some of the things Magic says. This set, last set story is about an empty imperial seat that's filled only long enough to select a regent. They have heard of democracy, right? Whoa. Between this and Jay's, it's like they think leaders don't have jobs to do. What the fuck? Somebody actually said that about a fantasy card game for people 13 and up. And it's like, I'm sorry, I think you're in the wrong place. Bro. He's right. Like, though. never mind the pretense of the like super pro democracy. Anything else is an invalid, less good system. But like, especially as it relates to a card game. So instead of actually like playing the damn game, we can just vote for who wins. Exactly. Yeah, that sounds nice. I'd like to live in that world because I would win. I'm very charismatic. Oh, yeah. Would you vote for me? No. Fuck you. I know you too well. Damn. That's sad. <laughs> Damn you. I would hope you wouldn't vote for me either, honestly. Neither of us are qualified. Uh, if there was one office of like power you thought you were qualified for at this moment, what would it be? Huh. Um, I'm not sure. I have to think about that. Probably like uh, one of the secretary cabinet positions. Mm. That's good. That's I, smart. I could do well with one of those. Mm. I put myself at Shogun because I think Shogun would look really cool on a resume. It's a good title. Isn't it? It's like the coolest word ever. Because it's you like have a shotgun. Gap in your resume here between the years of 2022 and 2027. What was that? Oh well, you see, that was my pillaging era. It's a bit hard to describe. You see, I had to organize mass amounts of troops to go reclaim resources in the name of our great military. You know, it was a real HR position. Now that I think about it, <laughs> no red flags at all. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I could ever answer that question actually truthfully because I have no idea how far I, like, I could mess things up. Maybe a hun, like a hun overlord. Let's talk some movies. Movies. We got a lot. There's a lot. Yes. We're gonna probably have to buzz through this. Um, you sent me a Rotten Tomato score earlier this week. Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Coming out this coming Friday is Uncharted. I feel like it, it feels to me like the kind of thing that needs the movie at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Just because so it doesn't ruin the brand. Every, every Uncharted game has had a subtitle. You're right. So having it not have a subtitle feels wrong. And then I feel like it also needs the movie so that you can remember that this is somehow tied to the video game. Because it just seems 
so so weird that I don't know. Sony wants money, right? When doesn't Sony want money? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so to everyone's absolute surprise, it's not doing well. Hark! No. It's not the worst movie we'll be talking about this week, though. That one's going to be fun. It has my favorite critic consensus bit I've ever seen on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, so God. I'm excited for that. Um, but it's like, it's apparently the, the consensus for this one seems to be, yup, it's a video game movie. It should have stayed a video game. You know, one of these days, I truly believe we will make a good video game movie. You know, I think Detective... I, I think at this point we can say that we have... Well, okay, um, well, there's only a handful I would consider remotely good, and it depends on where you stand on the position of what these movies are. Like, Right, so the first one that comes to mind for me, and to be clear, I haven't seen this one. This is just from the reviews that I read for it and from talking to people who have seen it. The first one that comes to mind for me is Rampage because it's like not a good movie, but it does the thing of being fun and not falling into the pit trap of looking like a video game movie. It just looks like a dumb Godzilla knockoff. Okay. I have not seen Rampage, but I do remember that being big when it came out. Yeah. And it was like it's at 51% right now. It's by no means a good movie, but it more than was it was plenty successful and has The Rock as the lead, so like it's still going to be pretty fun just cuz he's really fun to watch and he's a good actor. Um, yeah, that's like my video game movies aren't all bad if you know what you're doing kind of thing. Mm. What was your thought? Well, okay, so I got a couple movies here. Um, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is a movie that takes place with the not, like mm -hmm. the logic of a video game. Now, while it's not specifically based off video game, it's based off many genre tropes of video games. Mm-hmm. I would say that's a good video game movie, but that's because it's only taking the tropes of video games and it's not directly adaptating it. So I kind of don't want to put that too far in there. Yep. Um, two thirds of Detective Pikachu was a surprisingly good video game movie. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's more of a franchise at this point than like any direct adaptation of yeah. a Pokemon game. So. It is. It does kind of blur the lines. Given that it was live action, I think it counts. But also, being the detective angle is pretty unlike the games. It's more of a spinoff for sure. Yeah. Um. Let's see what else there was. The so two of the ones that I'm coming up with here: uh, Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Yeah. The, the fact that that's out. getting a sequel blows my mind. Yeah. Oh, I'm not surprised. I'm sure it made a shitload of money. Yeah. And like, given how the public perspective on it changed from the first trailer to what it actually ended up with i'm not too surprised that it did well it seemed like it might not have been great but it was a perfectly fine movie for what it was interesting that was how it looked to me there was a Another fucking that i had for... what gone go ahead i was gonna yeah. scream out there's a fucking tekken movie oh yeah I, I don't doubt it there's a lot of the fighting games tried to make movies and i don't think any of them went well no Oh, we're still waiting on the Minecraft movie. I forgot about that. No. Yeah. Um, but the other one that I had forgotten about is Werewolves Within. Oh, yeah. Which is, like, straight up based on a game. It was, I think, an Amazon Prime original kind of thing. Uh, and it did, like, totally fine. It was a kind of action comedy sort of thing. Let me look up what it actually ended up with. But from what I remember, 86%, like, it was totally fine. Hmm. It wasn't particularly successful because it came out in the middle of the pandemic, but like for a streaming primarily movie, I guess you don't really expect that so much. But like totally based on the video game with the same name. I'm trying to see like the movies for upcoming video game movies. Yeah, I saw a short list here. Um, Sonic 2. Borderlands. Chris Pratt's Super Mario Brothers. Oh. <sighs> There's going to be a Yakuza making... film? Yo. That'd be cool. Yo, Yakuza is one of those things I wish would be a movie because, like, I don't have a PS4 or a PS5. Mm -hmm. Can't fucking play the games. And I no. really just like the overall atmosphere of the fucking Japanese gangster video games. Mm -hmm. It's got good vibes to it. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Other ones we have coming up. Apparently they're making a, the Division movie, which is kind of weird. Oh shit! I there's, 
Five Nights at Freddy's. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed. Oh, they're making Splinters too. I was gonna say I wouldn't have expected them to make a The Division movie before a Splinter Cell movie. A Splinter Cell movie seems way easier to make. Yeah. Apparently, they're also making a Metal Gear Solid movie. That can so work. Now, now the average person cannot understand what's happening too. <laughs> I would love it if the Metal Gear Solid movie just starts like in media res and like they don't explain how they got to that point and they just move forward just as if you already know the context. I hope so. That'd be great. Do they have anything for it? Release TBA. Cool. That's a oh, lot of God, these movies. The director of Kong Skull Island. God have mercy. There's going to be a Just Dance movie. Apparently he's working with Hideo Kojima on it. So, like, legit. David Hayter is with it. So, it's like legit. It's the actual people. Oh, God. The highest rated video game movie is uh, Angry Birds 2. Yeah. The, uh, didn't they make a, like, Rio or whatever? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know which order that went. If that was, like, I think it was the movie video? first, and then they did the video game tie in. Was it? Yeah. I suppose that would make sense. Okay, actually good movies though, because there is some. Ooh. Um, last week we missed it, but it's just a quick note that the new Jackass movie came out. Isn't that which, surprisingly good all of a sudden? Uh, I don't know. It's doing really well. Okay. But, I mean, it seems like it's still just more Jackass. So if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you still probably won't. So, um, in honor of Jackass coming out, I decided to watch the ripoff movie of Jackass, mm -hmm. the Impractical Jokers movie. Are are you? No, they did that. They there's an Impractical Jokers movie. Yeah. Yes, my dude. And guess what? It's oh, bad. Is it? is it bad? There's one funny joke in the whole movie. One joke. That made me laugh. Everything else, I have no idea why they made this thing. Cause I you, would assume. Wait, it has like actual actors in it. Yes, because like okay. Oh no. So it, it's a really strange movie because like part of it is reality like TV esque where they're doing like live okay. stuff in front of real people, and yeah. then they'll do like these skit parts. Where they have like actual actors and like they're trying to tell an actual story because they're they're framing it as a road trip movie. Okay. So like, on their way to doing this road trip, they have to do the challenges they typically do during during the show. And you would mm -hmm. think with a movie budget, uh, they would like do more extravagant shit. No. Right. No, they do not. And um, I really have no fucking idea why they made this thing. Yeah, there's like only w one good joke, and it's like they do one of those uh, cave tours, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, they get like a good Hollywood makeups department to make one of them look like a fucking cave troll, and just like kind of follow people around like in these caves and freak out. They like people just freak out when they realize this guy is just following them like a cave troll, yep. and he, then he just pretends to be like a chill dude that just got lost for a couple of years. Yeah, that's... I can see that working. Yeah, well, I mean, like, not as like I don't know, movies like that haven't worked since like Airplane. Yeah, like that was the peak. You must need to stop trying to do this shit unless you have something original to add. I also really don't like the fucking poster, which is why I put it in there. Yeah, it looks not good. It's uncanny. They're clearly trying to go off of that like 80s comedy feel with it yeah we're like oh we don't have cg or photoshop so it's got to be a hand-drawn poster because that's the only thing we have now because mm -hmm. it's the 80s and no it's just tacky let me see if i can find the one good joke in this movie for you mm -hmm. um i keep going through the other ones here though please in good movies, or, you know, I guess depends on your uh, personal tastes, uh, one of the big ones is Marry Me. We talked about that before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go on. And it's apparently totally fine for a romantic comedy. Who would have guessed? 
Yo, just the fact that thing started as an indie comic that didn't even get finished. Mm-hmm. I'm impressed on how far it's come. I can't, you know, I, I have nothing but respect for the movie. Yeah. Even though it looks just trashy because I don't get indie vibes from it anymore. Especially when it has J-Lo and fucking Owen Wilson. Yep. Now, do you think the author originally intended it to be J-Lo and Owen Wilson? Or do you think they're just no. the only ones that said yes to it? They, uh, I looked into the original comics, and you can tell from the way the characters are that they did not at all expect it to be that way. Uh, I, I saw the original comics as well, but you know 2000s anime was a bitch. No, it's like not even close. Yeah. That's one of the most surprising things is how different the characters are from how they looked at in the in the comic. Yeah. It's stark. It's like night and day. Yeah. Owen Wilson looks more like the uh J Lo's character in the comic than he does his own. Mm-hmm. Uh what else do we have? Okay. Other big one that is doing pretty well is Death on the Nile. Okay. This is uh, Kevin Branagh produced and leading, or sorry, directed and leading, produced by Ridley Scott, um, featuring Gal Gadot. A crime mystery and thriller drama. Bulgarian sleuth Hercule Perot's Egyptian vacation aboard a glamorous river steamer turns into a terrifying search for a murderer when a picture-perfect couple's idyllic honeymoon is tragically cut short. Set against a landscape of sweeping desert vistas and the majestic Giza pyramids, this tale of unbridled passion and incapacitating jealousy features a cosmopolitan group of impeccably dressed travelers and enough wicked twists and turns to leave audiences guessing until the final shocking denouement. I believe I'm gonna look this up real quick. I think this is kind of a sequel. Okay. Uh, Kevin Brano. But I need to check. Yes, it is. So 2017, they did a film version of Murder on the Orient Express. I remember that. Kenneth Brano playing Hercule Hercule Perot in that one. This is the same. You know, Kevin Branagh as Hercule on their version of Death on the Nile. Okay. I'm kind of surprised that they did a sequel. They talk about it in some of the reviews that this is apparently um, a bit of a passion project for Kevin Branagh because of his affinity to the original source material. Mm -hmm. Um, But like Murder on the Orient Express wasn't that good. To be completely honest, it was kind of bad. Like, Ouch. I've, it, it wasn't like, because it was shot fine and it was acted fine. It was just kind of boring. So, so like nothing spectacular. They, well, no, I mean, it's a murder mystery. So there's only, you know, you have that one big incident at the start and that was kind of it. But the problem with it, and hopefully they could kind of fix it with this, is because it's the murder on the Orient Express. When you're doing it in a book, you're kind of painting the picture for yourself. Yeah. But it's set in like the siberian wastes pretty much you know oh it's very snowy and desolate yeah so there's basically no background ever nice being set in egypt you have a much more interesting and engaging location to be the backdrop yeah for your murder mystery but same idea though with the sort of self-contained on a boat kind of thing you know boat versus train (laughs) I would love to see... Okay, so there's so many like great works of literature in the public domain right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Why the fuck haven't we gotten like Sherlock Holmes on the Orient Express? Um, well, I don't know. Probably wouldn't... I mean, I guess you'd have to ask the question of why, you know? I mean, yeah, but I'm just saying if I was some Hollywood executive, I would totally greenlit just the stupidest crossovers and make a public domain cinematic universe. They kind of tried to do that with the, uh, not Watchmen, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, yeah. They kind of did that. And it was really poorly received. So I'm assuming that there's probably like a remember the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen sign in all of the Hollywood executives offices that they just point to when some stupid shit gets brought up. Do they have like the film's uh, poster? Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. I love the idea no, of Death that. Death on the Nile seems to be doing well. Um, 
it's 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 doing better than uh, murder on murder on the Orient Express did at the very least. That's good. Anything else on the top of your head that we have to talk about? Yes. So I want to talk about Blacklight. This is a political action thriller with Liam Neeson leading it. Okay. Take a guess at the... I'm not, I'm not going to have you do that. That's not fair. <laughs> it's at 6% out of 71 reviews. <sighs> the critics' consensus is just turn it off. Is it, like, pretentious? It is apparently just bad. No element of the narrative is presented with a modicum of detail required to make us care, which is a shame because if you squint really hard, you could see the beginnings of an intriguing political thriller in there somewhere. The script is, gross opportunism aside, dismally threadbare. Oof. One could even argue that it's not a movie at all, only a rusted out recycling bin of ill-fitted themes, notions, poses, conventions, affections, tropes, top topolets, and inert snippets of dialogue from other movies. So it's like copy and paste. It, it like is apparently trying to, so I, it's just, I'll read through the blurb. Uh, trust identity and the danger god this is already pretentious and dumb travis block lives and fights in the shadows a freelance government fixer block is a dangerous man whose assignments have included extracting agents out of deep cover situations when block discovers a shadowy program called operation immunity it is striking down ordinary citizens reasons for reasons known only to block's boss fbi chief robinson he enlists the help of a journalist but his past and present collide when his granddaughter and daughter are threatened now block needs to rescue the people he loves and expose the truth for a shot at redemption Nothing and no one is safe when secrets are hidden in black light like you can kind of tell from just that blurb that they don't have a firm idea of what the movie actually is you know I, what i mean because yeah <laughs> they're they're like going through all of these like things that don't actually say anything like i skipped over the whole first sentence because it doesn't actually say anything that doesn't <laughs> that's just bad writing mm -hmm. like there's definitely good ideas in these kinds of movies um like the uh angelina jolie salt yeah you know that one? uh it's vaguely like yeah it's like not a great movie but it plays on the ideas of these political intrigue and deception in a really effective way mm -hmm. to give you uh both a good action movie with like an extra layer if you want to worry about it that has the political side of things buried in it Remember, it sounds like from the I'm sorry, reviews that it just kind of the whole script is lacking. I was about to say, you remember like back um, like two weeks ago when we were talking about Neil Young mm -hmm. and I was saying how politics in American art always get like watered down and gentrified because they're too worried about getting it too political and thus alienating their audience. Yep. This is what I meant. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, All right. Two more quick ones. Okay. First music documentary ronnie's this actually sounds really good uh it's doing very well so far um critically you know public perception of or reception of documentaries is always usually kind of mixed yeah but um ronnie's chronicles the life of saxophonist ronnie scott from, a, from poor jewish kid in the east end of london to owner of the legendary nightclub ronnie's musical greats spanning decades played at ronnie's including dizzy gillespie sarah vana sorry sarah vahan ella fitzgerald miles davis Ross and Roland Kirk, Nina Simone, Van Morrison, Chet Baker, and Jimi Hendrix, who played there the night of his death. Glorious clips bring to life this legendary jazz club and its charming yet tormented owner. I, I'm down for that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That does sound awesome. I want it. Mm -hmm. Just, like, inject and the movie right into my veins. The other one is a... Um, drama comedy give or take that has apparently been delayed for a while or maybe never got its actual theatrical release until now due to the pandemic because it says it was made in 2020 but it's releasing now okay um this is a kind of a drama comedy um i'm gonna go ahead and just read through the movie description because i personally just think this sounds kind of interesting from like a concept of a movie 
Martin, a pragmatist who's checked the boxes of an acceptable life, yet feels disconnected, especially from his father, Kenneth, a distant man Martin could never figure out. Their relationship got more complicated when Kenneth came out after his wife's death. For the first time, he was able to live openly and honestly as a gay man. He found love with a younger man, his lawn guy, Ted, and they'd been living together in Ken's house on Cape Cod ever since. When Kenneth dies, Martin goes home to sell the house while sharing it with Ted. Grieving, they circle each other buttheads and negotiate how to remember the different man they both loved and the significance of what he left behind. It's not like a particularly high concept or anything like that, and it's definitely something that's been done in different ways before, but it feels to me like a much more current telling of that kind of story of like mixed relationships and identities surrounded by grieving over that same person that people knew very differently and it's doing very well it seems like it's doing it's a very very positive uh, critical reception so yep I didn't do that. Anything else? Okay. Um, so I'm going to keep going here then. So other movies that we have, um, there's a surprising number of drama thrillers coming out this week that are sort of hitting above their weight. Um, I guess in a good way, but in a way that I wouldn't have expected them to. Yes, everything you just said. <laughs> I apologize. I heard something downstairs. I'm home alone, and I need to go check on that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, give or take seems like a really good modern telling of a classic story. Or a classic concept, I guess. I agree. Yes. Chokes on you. It's actually a pro-Hitler movie. <laughs> You've been baited. I mean, let's get talking down about why we need to cleanse the human gene pool. Yes. You see, Cairo, uh, there are people in this world who are just born unequal to other people. And we need to weed out those weaker people. Okay. Yep. Is that it? And, you know, when you really think about it, white skin is really inferior skin because it doesn't hold moisture as well as, like, say, black skin. So okay. first thing we can do is, you know, white genocide. Is that a thing? What? Uh, white skin? Moisture? Yeah, I think so. It's like why uh, white people age like milk. I've never heard that. One moment, let me double check my findings there. Maybe we should move on. No, no, no. If we're going to cleanse the race, we need to be factual about this. So quick rapid fire movies here. Go on. Um, other stuff that's coming out. There's a lot of thriller, drama, mystery type stuff this week, which I'm OK with because that's like good movies tend to be in that category. Um Rapid Fire, Cosmic Dawn, uh, it's alien abduction when person's child, their mother gets abducted, and then that she's this movie's her as an adult, and she's in a UFO cult, and stuff happens. It's got 100%, it might be good. Ooh. Catch the Fair One, 92% uh, with almost 50 reviews, certified fresh, Native American boxer embarks on the fight of her life when she goes in search of her missing sister. It is seems to be just like probably the best movie that is like like critic like objectively the best movie even if it's not the most fun um mystery thriller drama catch the fair one seems to be good <laughs> here before drama mystery and thriller uh when a new family moves in next door their young daughter megan quickly captivates laura stirring up painful memories of her own daughter who died several years previous before long laura's memories turn to obsession as megan's unsettling behavior begins to convince her of something supernatural as Laura's determination to get to the bottom of it becomes all-consuming, her family begins to fracture, and that line between the extraordinary and the real becomes ever more obscured in this haunting story about a mother's love. 
Ooh. It seems to be okay. 82%, 51 reviews. Ooh. And Indemnity, a South American action movie, still in English, of course. Ex firefighter in Cape Town is forced to fight for his life after being accused of murdering his wife. After he struggles to survive, connections are revealed between his past, the origins of his PTSD, the mysterious death of his wife, and a government conspiracy with terrifying implications. Ooh. That's the rapid fire movies. Those seem to be, they're like less, less big names, like almost no big names in them, but they're doing critically a lot better than the big name movies are. That's good though. Yep. So, um, I will say this. I did see nightmare alley on HBO max. I don't know that one. Um, Guillermo del Toro. Oh, Bradley Cooper. Yeah. I don't think I've heard of this. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, basic premise is a guy goes to live with carnies for a while, eventually learns how to cold read and uh, masquerades as a fake psychic to uh, coax rich dumb assholes out of their money. Hmm. I give it a solid eight out of ten. Seems to be about where the consensus is landing. Is it? Hmm? Yeah, seventy nine percent. I'm seeing lots of four out of fives. Oh. Yeah, that, that makes about sense. It's a it's a nice good noir crime thriller. Mm-hmm. It's apparently a remake. Yes. Of, a, of an older movie. I'm seeing a lot of people that are just like, go see the original one. Uh, apparently it must be very good because I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I heard this one doesn't do a candle to it and I can kind of see why because the middle kind of drags a little bit. But yeah. the ending, man, it's really good. Like, it's very nice. But I'm also like a whore for Del Toro, so mm-hmm. the man does something. I'm more than likely going to watch it. Yep. I think that's fair. Hmm. Fun bit here. I might actually have to do this. Uh, Ronnie's is available on Amazon to rent or buy. Ooh. So that actually. I'd be curious how much of it is um, like discovered and remastered clips versus original stuff it sounds like almost all of it is original clips remastered that would make sense like kind of like what james cameron did with his uh world war ii doc yeah pretty much yeah i would totally watch it if it was on something i had quick access to well you don't have voodoo (laughs) what the hell is voodoo (laughs) It's apparently a streaming service that's available on. Ooh. That's nice. I really don't know much else about that. Here's another one. French Dispatch is also available on Prime Video now. Um, Apparently that's coming to HBO Max, and I'm very excited for that. Ooh, is it? Yes. I highly recommend it when it does. It's it's different. It's set up and paced really oddly because it's broken up into short stories, but I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. To be honest, I'm trying to get more into Wes Anderson because I do know like he is actually good at m- movies. Um, problem is, I've only seen The Grand Budapest Hotel because, well, you, you shoved that down my uh, face yes. in freshman I year. Forced you to. Yes, you did. I, I definitely did. Yeah. And I'm trying to play catch up as well because, yeah, it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. I would say so. I know Moonrise Kingdom is supposedly like his baby. Like, um, I didn't like it as much. It's not bad by yeah. no means. It's bad. It, it definitely has the same, um, sort of uh, cinematography feel that uh, Grand Budapest Hotel has. Well, that's because it's a West it, Anderson. Both, more so than some of his other stuff, though, because he also does he did uh, fantastic mr fox and isle of dogs mm-hmm. and those being animated carry the same narrative kind of quirks but being animated visually are different but moonrise kingdom uses a lot of the same visual techniques but has a in my opinion not as strong of a story but i can definitely see how other people would think that that it is preferable mm-hmm. it's like it's a personal preference thing they're both good you hear that, everybody? It, they're both good. Go watch they're them. Both good. All of them are good. I need to watch some of his older stuff still, though. 
because um, I haven't seen the Royal Tenenbaums and I haven't seen the Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, and those are both apparently also quite good, but they're older, so I'm not sure if they're as easily accessible. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what we need? What's that? We need to watch The Room. I don't think we do. Why not, my dude? For me, it's the kind of thing that I would much rather understand it through other people breaking it down and analyzing it because I kind of know how it is. It's the kind of thing that feels like it's probably better if you don't know what it is going into it, if that makes sense. You know, having that fresh perspective. You're probably right because I've seen this movie more times than I care to admit. And I'll leave it at that. I won't tell you how many times I've seen The Room. Yeah. But I have, like, watched a lot of Room-related media as well, like The Disaster Artist, and I have the book that's about the making of The Room. Mm -hmm. Um, It is an ever-loving shithole of, like, a production story Mm -hmm. that you can always Mm -hmm. take away more and more from. And there's still so much we don't know about this movie. It's just like it's my mystery, and there's something about it I just cannot like get my mind away from. Yep. It's kind of like having a like a movie or a game with a really sharp twist in it. Yes. You have that twist spoiled. It kind of spoils ever seeing it on your own because you're expecting it. Oh my god! So um, now that you mentioned twist, I have to get this off my fucking chest. Pokemon Legends Arceus is a good game, but the story is absolute fucking shit. That's what I've heard. Yeah, like, oh my god, dude. It's like... They tried doing a plot twist, like, for the like the third act. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I was excited because I'm like, oh my god, it's, something's actually happening. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. And then um, nothing happens. Hmm. Yeah. Really? Just, just nothing? Nothing substantial. Like, okay. the, so they, do they just like build it up to be bigger than it actually is? I guess. Yeah, actually, because okay. like, um, the the whole point of the game is survival, right? Yep. Well, the big twist is you get kicked out of the nice like village where you're living. So I'm like, oh shit, we've got to actually survive now. There's no like go back to heal. No, mm-hmm. no, nah. they're they're you know. You get, like, a new place to hang out. That's it. Hmm. Yeah. And I was, like, very upset about that. And they're, like, I don't know, maybe an hour before you actually get to go back. And it's, like, what the fuck was the whole point of that then? People? Bring your damn plot twist. Yeah. Yeah. If you're telling a story, make sure your plot twist actually has a point. What is your favorite plot twist in film, Cairo? In film? I don't know. I'd actually have to think about that, because I don't have... I'm, there's nothing that's like immediately coming to mind as having like a big twist in it. That's what I'm trying to figure out as well. I know Knives Out apparently has a good twist. Um, I mean, that's more just because it's like a murder mystery, you know? Yeah. So it by the formula, it kind of has to have the... Uh, the reveal that I guess could be a twist, but that would definitely be, if that genre at all counts, that would probably be pretty high up. I'm just looking up like a list of plot twist, heavy movies. Mm-hmm. And of course you got like the sixth sense. They're all Shyamalan movies basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, the prestige. Oh shit. Yeah. I would definitely say the prestige that does a very good job of being a movie with a twist. Actually, you know what? I would say Citizen Kane is mine. Mm-hmm. What about Spider-Man Homecoming? That has a twist. Oh my god, I just got there as well. <laughs> what is the plot twist? Okay, yeah, never mind. I just remembered what the plot twist in Homecoming was. <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch. I mean, it's a cool kind of, I don't know. Because, like, it doesn't twist the plot. It just, you redefine, like, who the relationships are. Yep. 
And the plot twist, ladies and gentlemen, is Spider Man's dating the villain's uh daughter and he doesn't even realize it. Yeah. Which is cool. It, yeah. it, it's a very effective reveal. But yeah, it doesn't really change the stakes so much, I guess. No, because it, it really doesn't, because like he's not always gonna he's gonna kill his own daughter, he's gonna kidnap his own daughter. No, he's not. No. Is he gonna fucking uh Gwen Stacy his own daughter? Just like pick her yeah. up and then just like drop it, her? It definitely does um recontextualize these relationships though in an effective way you know okay another one of my favorite uh plot twists but not for a good reason Mm -hmm. because it's silly and stupid um signs signs i don't Shyamalan movie there's aliens invading the plot twist here the aliens are weak to water they melt when you put water on them really yes i know i've heard of this but i don't remember this yeah. Okay. What what's the twist? That's it. Spoil it. Two thousand. Oh, that that is the twist that they just die to water. Yes. Yeah. Good job, aliens. You fucked that one up, didn't you? You know, it's almost like the planet's eighty percent water. Yeah. It's just a really ballsy move, you know. Um. Oh, technically, I guess Empire Strikes Back is a plot twist. Kind of. Again, it doesn't change much, but find it hard to count particularly popular media in it because of how i guess it's from like a a perspective of hindsight yeah it is like such common knowledge that it's hard to consider it a twist you know what's the fucking plot twist the dark knight rises uh it would be that uh Ra's al ghul is liam neeson not the guy that dies I mean, I guess, but... Oh, no, you... sorry, that's Batman Begins. Dark Knight Rises, I have no idea. Yeah. Dark Knight, I guess. Uh, uh, the, the, no, that, no, I have no idea. <laughs> like, like, maybe oh, Har- Harvey becomes Two-Faced, but that's just not, that's not a twist, that's just the plot developing. I just... It's a fine line. Because there has to be something that comes before it, in my opinion, to subvert the twist, if that makes sense. Yeah, if there's nothing to twist, you can't yeah. twist it. And a lot of these don't do that. It's just the plot developing in a way that was not expected. It's not a deviation from what was previously told. I guess Frozen has a plot twist. <laughs> kind of. I mean, like one of the ones I'm seeing in here is, um, is it The Descendants? Is that what it is? Maybe I might have the wrong name for it. Let me see if I can find this real quick. But it's a similar way where it is, it has story beats that you might not take, that takes it in a direction you might not expect, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it is a movie with a plot twist. Yes. Hmm. I just saw it. This is going to bug me now. Same with Seven. Like, Seven isn't, like... I don't know. I haven't seen Seven in a while. By some of this logic, The the Karate Kid is a plot twist movie. Yeah. The Departed is the one I was thinking of. Very good movie. Very dark. But I wouldn't... I would really hesitate to call it a movie with a strong plot twist. Yeah. I mean, if you really want to get somewhere on there... The Force Awakens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That might actually be like a very good example of plot twisting. Plot twist, this is no longer relevant to the franchise. (laughs) Hmm. I'm trying to think of other, like, plot twist. I'm out. You know, I'm just going to tap me out, Chiral. I'm done. You have movies that you've, like, seen once that you can't remember where you what they were. Like, vague plot concepts that you can't attach to a name or a poster. No, try, like, give me an example, no, I, I guess. 
I have a memory of like a straight to TV sci-fi movie that I saw once. Okay. That the idea is that there's these people spelunking in like the caves in a desert. And in the caves, they find some alien or something. And it turns from like it's basically like a, a horror movie at that point with like, you know, them trying to get out of the caves before they get killed. Kind of like Alien. Yeah, but in and a tunnel. I distinctly remember that, like, the twist in it is that at the very end, the two main characters end up getting out of the caves and everyone else dies. And at the very end of it, it's like sequel baiting where it reveals that one of the two people that got out was infected by the aliens. Ooh. And now they're, like, out in the public. Ooh. Couldn't tell you the name of the movie. Couldn't tell you any specific details other than like those vague story beats. But it's something that I definitely saw at some point. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I guess if it came to that point, I don't think I could like recall it because I've just got a terrible memory for things mm-hmm. I don't, you know, that don't resonate with me. Yeah. Well, I guess, see, this is the problem with it, is that this is technically right. It is, it, like, it's not even technically, it is absolutely correct with The Sixth Sense. But, like, everyone knows the twist already. What's the twist? I'm pretty sure that's the one with, uh, like, the I see dead people thing, and the twist is that he's already dead. I, I know, I was just joking. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, spoilers for everyone else. Like, but, I mean, like, who doesn't know that? It's, like, become part of popular media and culture at this point because it did so well and was so received oh you know what's good a good twist movie hmm. you know that william shakespeare and his fucking romeo and juliet uh story that's got a good twist that was crazy yeah man they were just kids man they were just kids especially the uh leonardo dicaprio one is not the one where they fuck I have no idea. Oh. Um, but it was the modern retelling version of it, I'm pretty sure. It was terrible. <laughs> you know what's a good retelling? Apparently it did better than I thought. I saw it and I thought it was terrible. Put it that way. Um, West Side Story is actually a pretty good Romeo and Juliet retelling. Is it? Yeah. I guess so. I guess it is, yeah. My... There's no there, there no guess guessing in it, man. It's straight up Romeo mm-hmm. and Juliet. Yeah. They just sing and dance. Yep. And there's Puerto Ricans. Yep. And if you think the Puerto Ricans are the fucking villains, you're wrong. Um, yeah. My girlfriend made me watch both versions of West Side. That's why it's on my mind. Anything else for the show today, Air Chiral? I believe that's all. Okay. Well, y'all, I've been the infamous Orion, and if my protest has been ineffective today for good movies, then that's just upsetting. I did everything in my power. I'm Chiral. No one wants a world war. <laughs> that's what we need to protest. Go to like the Ukraine border right now and just like block it up so Putin can't do his world war. <laughs> There we go. Exactly. 